Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. Michael Freeman. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation during our live tapings, please check us out at youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy on Mondays at 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can see the final product on the air at youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy, again, on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And please check out our Facebook page, uh, Facebook.com slash Cur of Anarchy. If you're here during the live taping right now, uh, you can post any questions and comments to the thread that we posted to that page. And now a word from our, a word from our sponsors. Holly Cogburn runs Homebody, a body care, vanity, and cosmetic products company. She contracts using USD, Bitcoin, Homebody products, and fresh produce. She is proud to say that she started the business without the assistance of bank loans. In her words, fuck bank loans and fuck their interest rates. For the most part, fuck banks. She paid for costs out of pocket and has steadily and sustainably grown from there. She believes in a free, fair, and reputation-based market. So please find Holly at homebodyco.com or facebook.com slash homebodyco. So, Michael, uh, we have three special guests, um, and they are back from previous shows. So take it away, Michael. Absolutely. What's up, guys? Uh, sorry for the the rocky start tonight, but <laughs> you know, you y'all know you know how we do. You know how we do. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Uh, there, nice. there's, <laughs> Go no, there, there's some children on set, and and that's no problem with us. We like we actually like to do that kind of stuff. Um, even next week, we're gonna we're gonna get a little uh, away from our usual our usual spin on the show. We're gonna be joined by Jordan Page, who is going to perform a live song on our show, which is definitely something that we've never done, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, man, and uh, yeah, I don't want to give away too much, but that w expect spoilers to come. Um, yeah, but yeah. you and I are both into music anyway, so. Oh, right, I agree. I'm just saying that we have never done anything like that yeah. on the program, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so this week, just uh, another little more unorthodox. There might be some children running around. Maybe even one of our guests is a child. However, <laughs> um, we're going to bring back three of them, and, and I'll say what's up to Zane first. Bring him back. Uh, how you doing, bud? Yo, what's up? I'm doing pretty good. What's going on with you, man? I, you know, just hanging out, getting harassed by my mom, she wants me to check out colleges, <clears throat> oh. and I'm still eating Easter candy, so I had some chocolate stuck in my throat. <clears throat> right on. Good. Sweets are cool. And uh, next, I guess, down the line, we got John Moss, uh, very probably too much of a regular on this show. <laughs> yeah, John. Yeah, what's up, guys? What's up, man? What are you doing? Nothing. Just hanging around, hating the state, you know, the usual. <laughs> <laughs> teaching, teaching your kid to do the same. Good idea. Yeah. Um, Brain, brainwashing my six-year-old into being an agorist. Right, right. Brain, brainwashing, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then our third guest is Sarah Perkins, who comes back from, I believe, the week before last. Her and John came on for the uh, the unschooling program that I, I unfortunately missed, but I watched it, and it was, it was good stuff. It was one of the better shows that... It was the most planned show that we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on with you? Hey, not much. Just being a mom. What'd you do, throw the kid in the cage? <laughs> no, <laughs> when he gets hurt, he usually wants his dad. <laughs> and he dropped a glass on his foot. So. Ouch, ouch. All right, so that's our guess. Back to you, Josh. All right. So uh, the first thing that I think we really should touch is something that Michael's brought up uh, about basically book banning or even book burning. It's all the same thing to me. Um, 
you know, so something about an anarchist cookbook. Uh, this book is uh, has been proposed to be banned, I believe. Is that correct, Michael? Oh, uh, this woman has a fucking opinion that this book should be banned, and she means to go as far as banning it on the interwebs. However, she intends to pull that off. I don't know, but yeah, that's it. Um, and yeah, it is kind of it's kind of crazy, and I don't, I don't want to take too long. We want to go through the through the table here, right? So I'll just briefly go over this article, and it is scary. It's kind of an Orwellian thing. It's the, it's to me one of the same signs of a falling government as the proposition of the 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 face of the state claiming that forced voting is is a good thing. Um, so anyways, the article is, is titled uh, Senator Feinstein Push... And you guys know Dan Dianne Feinstein. All you gun nuts sure know Dianne Feinstein. Um, she pushes for the anarchist cookbook, which has nothing to do with anarchism. It's basically a bunch of bad ideas rolled up into one little book. How to burn stuff and break things and that type of thing. However, however... <laughs> If this is a free society, if you have freedom of speech and First and Fourth Amendment rights and all this good stuff. Um, so I'm not even going to read the article. Basically what she's implying, what I gather is that a few weeks ago there was two women who were enticed by a Federal Bureau of Investigation agent who offered them this book. They had previously online been displaying anti-state sentiment that was perceived by this FBI agent to be potentially violent. He brought them this book, said maybe you should build something that's in this book, and they started to, and then the government cracked down on them, and now Dianne Feinstein wants to ban this book. So that's the gist. Josh, take it away. Yeah, um, I, I think it's funny that, you know, people love to ban books. It doesn't matter whether it's hard copy or not. You know, people love banning ideas that they hate uh, and whether, it whether it's matter whether it's a good idea to other people you know just the fact that they're scared of a certain idea um, it goes along the same lines as uh, people are scared of guns so they try to ban guns um, people are scared of a multitude of things and they try to ban it and it doesn't make any sense because that means that some people will go against that and will either be sent to jail or will actually show everybody else that banning doesn't make any sense uh, and you know proof uh, you know prove it in logic or prove it in um, uh, in practice and so my thing is um, it doesn't matter what's inside this book even if I were against it or anybody were against it it doesn't matter. You know, you're, uh, you're spending your energy in the wrong place. It could be used actually producing something. Anyway, that's my point of view. Uh, yeah, so, uh, John, you want to take this? Yeah, sure. Um, now, you said the FBI gave these women this book. Is that is that correct? That's what the article says. The... Um uh, and on, an undercover FBI agent, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the, the, the two New York women who had been, quote, given a copy of the anarchist cookbook by an undercover FBI agent were charged with attempting to use the information found in it to make a bomb and launch a terror attack on the United States, unquote. Right. Well, <clears throat> I'm not really surprised at this. I mean, not to get all tinfoily, but I mean, it's, it's well known that the FBI... Um, creates uh, terrorist terror plots, whatever, just for the specific uh, purpose of foiling them at the last minute and going, see, look, the war on terror is working. Give us more money. We need more money. So I'm I'm not surprised that they did that. As far as actually banning the book, I mean, good luck. Uh, uh, with the with with the exception of just you know blocking the internet from America, I'm not sure how they're going to do that. <laughs> well, it's um, an incredible silly thing to ban because my dad used to own that book and um, he used it to build a potato cannon out of PVC pipe and hairspray so unless the FBI wanted them to launch a potato like a thousand yards then <laughs> well they're not terrorists I have been well, I have been are. voluntarily I have been voluntarily shot by a potato 
and I promise you it's not lethal. Okay, it can be lethal. It can. But there's no reason for government involvement, I promise you. Okay. It can be lethal if it's been unregulated and toxic. I think that's the whole point with this kind of stuff, though, is it scares people, and it separates us, and it tears us apart, and so then they can, you know, basically get their boot in and say, okay, well, this is scary for all these people. We're going to go ahead and ban it. Um, and we're already so far away from each other. We're, we're not a community anymore. No one's a community anymore um, that they're able to do that because we don't talk. Right. Nobody trusts anybody. It's all about fear. I don't trust any of you. <laughs> Michael, I had you in my house. Come on, man. <laughs> and, and, and what was the first thing I asked you, dude? Hey, can you show me all your hard metals? <laughs> <laughs> point. Very, very good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just planning that heist, baby. When the well, when the yeah, happening happens, I know whose house is to go to. Okay. <laughs> here's the thing, though. Know, who, if you don't trust anybody, Michael, how are you going to get through the happening? That's oh, I'm just. Thing. Well, first, I don't think that the happening is ever going to happen. Second, no, if the happening ever does happen, we are all going to die. Third, I actually was just, just kind of joking. It's not happening? No, I don't think that it's happening at all. No, I, I really don't. Um, but thirdly, no, I was kidding. I trust, I'm, I'm an overly trusting person. I trust all of you on this screen right now with my life. And I shouldn't probably do that, but I do. No, no, see, that's the difference. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're right to trust everybody on this line, 100%. Hell no. Uh, None of you. Okay, Josh Josh and John have both given me reasons to trust them. I can say that. And I, I think that yeah, I trust Sarah, I and I don't think I have a reason to do that because I've only ever really spoken to her online and on Mumble and on, on this kind of thing, and Zane as well. Um, so logically speaking, if you're, if you're running the numbers, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't trust them. For all I know, they're not real. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> They're government agents, man. I'm a gov I'm the best government agent ever, dude. <laughs> I don't know. You're playing the long con. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, go ahead, sir. No, I was just gonna say I think it's a good thing that we learn how to trust each other and not necessarily what's coming out of the government and the media. But actually listening to each other, even if we haven't met and it's just online, actually listening and growing those types of relationships because that's what's going to make the world a better place, whether or not it's happening or not. Right. Yeah, it's that, bit, that it, and the like the logical background that we're all getting uh, off of these conversations. It's not just the relationships, but the ability to back up everything that we're kind of espousing over here. So, yeah, anyway. aside from from John here, um, the majority of my friends that I would consider that I trust are are online. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, no question about it. Yeah. So. So, let's move on. Right. Uh, agreed. Um, I th again, uh, we were talking about book banning right there, and a lot of people love to ban firearms or want to ban firearms. Drugs. Um, drugs. Books. Uh, gay religions. Yeah. Pokemon. Right. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is um, I think we have uh, an opportunity to talk about what is going on in your next show tomorrow, Michael. Uh, so, um, yeah, talk about uh, Marcel a bit. All right. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a sec to talk about my show, I guess, because I've I've never formally done it here, as you just pointed out. So, so I launched my own little little program called Abolishing Authority with Michael Freeman. Um, the tenth, I believe, episode is tomorrow, and I haven't been pushing it as hard as this show. It, this one's just kind of for me. It's so I can. You know, I can be in control. This is more of Josh's gig that I jumped into, and yeah, it's it's us now. I'm not, I I think that's the case, but I like to say cunt sometimes, and I like to get angry, and I like to drink hard, and that's why I launched my show just to do the more punk rock esque kind of kind of thing. Um, and Josh and I have actually been talking about bringing the currency of anarchy into a more professional atmosphere, which I'm not opposed to. I just also want my my network of being able to be a, a boisterous douchebag. 
So, um, so this week I'm going to be joined by Marcel Fontaine. That's going to be tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, he just moved to New Hampshire like a month and a half ago, and he's up there in the Capitalist House in Keene. He's at the, the Keene Activist Center all the time, participating in activism all the time, and uh, I'm just going to get him on the show to to talk about the move, what was going through his head when he really did that, because from what I understand, he basically just up and left his life mm-hmm. and went up to went up to Keene and, and moved into a bedroom in somebody else's house. That that's what I gather. And um, he did he made that sacrifice for liberty and I'd just like to to see what's going through his head because I know that at least Two, at least three of the people on this program right now, including myself, are planning on doing, in a limited fashion, this exact same thing. So, right, not to the same extent. That's all. No, I'm not going to like sell myself, sell all my stuff, and move into somebody's house. No. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do appreciate you giving me the shout outs and. Uh, Josh, you will be coming back on the show pretty soon. We don't have it scheduled, but it will be soon, and that will be uh, the Currency of Anarchy Edition 2.0. And that's going to be happening when Josh moves to New Hampshire. Here, what, and what is that? Here in two months, I think. Yeah, so even, I'm, actually, I'm actually moving, uh, or I'm getting the keys apparently May 1st, so that's less than a month, and it, I'm shocked. Uh, I don't even feel it yet, uh, but... We've seen the pl- it's an amazing place, and f- to me, the the way I see the place, it's uh, triple the space at least for less than double the rent. I'm your house like, is not, your house is pretty nice though. It, uh, it's right small. Now, it's small, but it's nice. It, it's small. It's mm, it's all right. I mean, it's in an apartment building. It's in it's on the outskirts of Lowell, so that's nice. But it, it's right on Drum Hill. Basically, uh, if anybody knows where the hell that is, but uh, it's a, uh, it's right on the highway, basically. Uh, but this place, it, it's a, uh, it's just over the border into New Hampshire, so it's still not far from like uh, family and all that. And I care about family, yes, they're all <laughs> status, but still. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait. It's uh, now, it's not June anymore. It's May now. It's like word, really. <laughs> so anyway, word. word? Now, <laughs> word? Really? This isn't Nashua though. Uh, it's it's basically right next door to Nashua. It's, it's Hudson. Hudson. Uh, okay. It's right next door. So I am planning on moving to New Hampshire, and my thoughts on the matter are, and I am in not in support of the Free State Project. I do go to their summer event, the Por- Porcupine Freedom Freedom Festival but I am not a, a member of the Free State Project, and I don't think that I ever will be. However, I feel that the best shot for achieving liberty, liberty in our lifetimes, quote Ian Freeman, um, I, th- <laughs> I think that the best opportunity we have to achieve that is to congregate, is to get close together to people who actually also agree in the fundamental beliefs in individual liberty and, and, and the like and maybe buy some guns, and maybe buy some gold, and maybe prepare for kicking the state out of said geographical location, right? I think that's the not only the, o- the best bet, but the only bet. I don't think anything else is going to cut it. So I am, I am working on loosely, and it, it's longer term than shorter term, like I think two years. I'm working on moving to New Hampshire. So my question for you guys is, how do you feel about that notion of achieving liberty? The notion that congregation is probably job one. That's what that's what I would think. Sarah, uh, Sarah, yeah. I, well, I am very much a community-minded person, not necessarily like communism, but I do think that, especially uh, for women and for mothers who are going to be the ones that are raising the next generation who will push the liberty movement even further, um, we do need those like-minded communities just for support. I mean, because like you said a minute ago, you love your family, but they're all still status. So, you know, what are you going to do when you have a different view and your mother's telling you you're not raising your child right? So the being able to um, stand up for what you believe in um, very much hinges on being able to have a community around you. Yeah, I can't wait to get out of this state of shithole and move to New Hampshire. Priority, <laughs> priority number one. 
No, I mean, you're right. when you're when you're with like-minded people, it's it's a lot easier to get things done. Um, especially recently, um, I am actually I'm probably going to get so much shit for this, especially for Michael. But I am a fan of uh, defensive voting, and uh, for example, what Cantwell is doing with his anarcho lobbyists, like I, I support all of that. Being reason being because this is <laughs> yeah I see reason being because this is what we have right now. The state is not disappearing tomorrow. No, no matter we could all become agorists tomorrow. We could all you know, peacefully revolt tomorrow. The state isn't just going to walk away. Um, I partly agree with Michael uh, that, yeah, we're probably all going to die before, <laughs> before the happening dust settles. But, um, yeah, I, I, I really think... Um, at, le at, least I can, at least I can laugh when you say that, I, yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, because what are you going to do about it, you know? But, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, with, if we're all together in the same geographic location... You can you can vote against these stupid uh, you know stupid bills or whatever. You can you know members of the the FSP are in the uh, the, the house in New Hampshire and um, you know I mean what better way than to actually get a, a bunch of voluntarists into uh, here we go this this is going down the dangerous road of change it from within which I think is stupid but if if you can get people in there to at least uh, at least be defensive and vote against these, you know, tax raises or whatever. I, I think, yeah, I think that's a, a good step towards liberty in our lifetime, sure. <laughs> I so disagree, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Saying you're up. As for, like, congregating in New Hampshire, I mean, I guess that's okay. I mean, I guess it works. I mean, America Wait, wait, is, wait, wait. Yeah. wait. Uh, in New Hampshire, no, in New Hampshire is not what I mean. Like, that's my plan. But just I just anywhere. mean anywhere, yeah. Whether it's okay. Anarchy Pokal, whether it's the Blue Ridge yeah. Liberty Project, I don't care. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, I'm just going to use, An I'm, I'm gonna use uh -huh. New Hampshire as my example because, you know, that works. I mean, I'm, I'm not really totally in support of that because I feel that there's a lot more statism and uh, authoritarianism in so many different places that are like far away from the so what called safe places or low tax regions, whatever, that we kind of need to bring the ideals to there. I mean, it's kind of like I I don't know if I like using this example because someone's gonna get mad, but I mean, at the feminists are always trying to change stuff in this country where women are least oppressed. Why don't they go and change things in like Pakistan or Syria? Yeah, no, yeah, dude. I actually, you're probably, I'm probably the one that you think was going to get mad there. And uh, no, no, I actually kind of agree with that argument. Like, I'm not going to say the the semantics, but your point is that we should bring freedom to places where it has no fucking chance. We should, yes. rather than focusing on New Hampshire, we should focus on Chicago. We should focus on Afghanistan instead of. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't have a better example outside, but yeah, we should focus on Chicago or Washington D.C. In, instead of New Hampshire or uh, Oregon, somewhere that already has this. I disagree, guys. Uh, I really disagree here. Oh, I didn't say I agree. I just said I see what he's saying. I see what he's saying, but the point. Uh, I think the counterpoint to that is that. There are two things. You should be a beacon of light. You should be just exemplified liberty. And if people well. see that and notice it, then they will start to change on their own. I mean, that's how it worked for me. It did work for me because see? nobody was going to teach me liberty at all. Second point, second point is that you can't force other people to freedom. It's not like you're saying that. You're not saying you're going to try to force people into freedom, but that's exactly how that works is uh, the military is across the world based on the premise of bringing people <laughs> You can't do it. It's impossible. You have to just be free. You have to live freely. That's it. And if pe people see that, then they're going to ask you questions, and that's how the ball uh, gets rolling. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, I well, I guess you can kind of congregate in a way, because I just thought of this, but since we are living in the information age of the Internet, everything can be transmitted so fast, we can spread our ideas to 
like other countries very easily compared to back when Al Gore didn't invent the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Point. Point. Do you think? Do you think that um, spreading our views to those countries who are literally almost starving, some of them, is as good of an idea as maybe fostering it here in our own country first and then building it? Obviously, this is, you know, lifetimes. But building it enough to where those countries don't see us as, oh, my God, it's America and they're stupid. But yep, see yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started to misunderstand you for a second there, but yes, I fucking fully agree. Who the hell are you to try to spread freedom to other people if you've never experienced it yourself? That's Absolutely. It. Show sure. people that, and that's my that's my point with congregation, right? Let's create a limited free society. Let's make this. I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to nuke us to death. But, but <laughs> if it ever is, let let's create this little free society in a nook of New Hampshire or in a nook of fucking Mexico or whatever and and show people that it's a better way and show people that it's a better method. Dropping bombs and killing people when your society is probably economically less free than theirs is kind of sick in my opinion. Like, we're going to go kill ISIS when they have a fucking free market currency? <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure America chops more heads than, than ISIS does. I don't know. But uh, and I'm no, I'm no, I'm no apologist for them. Don't get me wrong. If they, if they are real, they're bad juju. But, but. actually, they're bad Muslim. <laughs> Why is is, is, ju, is juju a religion? <laughs> Just double Judaism. Uh, I, don't know. I know juju. I didn't mean like Jew, like like Judaism. I meant like bad juju. I would. I, I, I mean I think, like J like J U J U. I I would think that would be African. I think I like, think that's uh, Creole. Oh, I like so that, yeah, Creole. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So it comes from West Africa and like Haiti and stuff. Probably mixed in with Fran French along the line. Okay, okay. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, I didn't mean like Judaism. I mean, I think those guys are fucking crazy, but like that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I think Christians are fucking crazy too. I think atheists are fucking crazy too. All right. Everybody's crazy. Oh, it's six and seven. It's a little crazy. <laughs> oh, Michael. You know what? Everybody's crazy except for me. It's just me. I mean, if that's not if that's not your prerogative, sign your donor card and shoot yourself in the fucking head. I don't. I don't know what else to <laughs> if you don't think that you're smarter than every everybody else, what the hell are you doing? What are you right. doing? You're not a very good anarchist. No, or human, human. I think. Oh, okay. Seriously, if you don't look, it, all right. I, I guess I'm creating another topic again. Um, incent <laughs> incentives, baby. Incentives, right? Humans don't do things because they think they're right. They don't do things because they think they're wrong. They do things because they think they are going to benefit. It's all incentives. Everything is. I don't even. And I'm on the fence with morality right now. I'm not sure where I stand. I'm really not. I think that rape is evil. I think that murder is evil. And I'm not going to say that I believe in objectivism. I, I don't have a position yet. I really gotta, I'm going like, to take, take a year and work this one out. Right? Um, but yeah, what do, you, what, do you guys, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I, th I think that humanity, I think that your first motivation 100% of the time is beneficial incentives. I think that is every human being's first motivating factor for every single decision that they make. I um, disagree. That, that is complete. No, let, uh, I'm going to go first on this because yeah. I agree with him. Okay. So I agree with him because even if you're doing selfless acts like, you know, donating to the orphanage or whatever, you still get this warm, fuzzy feeling inside that makes you feel good. So it's not really about helping other people. It's never about helping other people. It's about this chemical that goes into your head and influences your thoughts. I don't know. I think it... I mean, it just kind of depends <laughs> on how you're raised, maybe? Um, because I'm, I'm a pretty selfish person. Uh, but... I like to help people not because it makes me feel good. 
happen because half the time it doesn't. I usually get up, end up getting screwed over. Um, but I always do. I don't really know why. I don't know what drives me, but I just do. So I, I mean, obviously that's very anecdotal, but <laughs> I guess it just depends on the person. Yeah. Well, I would I would agree with Sarah mostly up right up until um yeah you know when when you help somebody and then they, they screw you over you generally won't help that person again. Um, so I, I don't know I kind of agree with a, a mixture of everybody. Um, I I do um I help people because it makes it makes me feel good when 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 I help somebody out or know, whatever, buy a homeless guy a meal or whatever you may do, whatever you do like that. But uh, it makes me feel good. But if I if I do something for for maybe a friend or an acquaintance or something, and it and can, it can, up can I can I interject really quick? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and this is actually going to contradict my my initial uh, first principle syllogy point. Um, John has helped me in the past in ways that I know were not beneficial for him. Guys, I can... I, I'm pretty sure you're all uh, missing reputation. Because, <laughs> for example, uh, John, if uh, he's helped out Michael, then that gave him a boost of reputation on Michael's part. So that, A, gave... John, uh, like a synapse boost or something. Josh, Chemical Josh, boost plus reputation. Yeah, I think I think you're getting me. I think you're all getting me wrong. I did not take when I made my initial point about about incentives or what you want to happen. I also said mutually beneficial. That is still mutual. Mutually well, exactly, beneficial. Exactly what I'm. Exactly right. Right. I'm, agreeing, I'm fully agreeing with you, yeah. Right, so every human action, you know, it, maybe maybe there is a benefit to every human action. Maybe you're right. Uh, it, look, look, dude, if I, have a sandwich, if I have a sandwich and you have five bucks and you want my sandwich and I want your five bucks and we trade, well, that's we, a both, trade yeah. we both so, see benefit in in. Right, in but there's also things, a reputation so. boost on both ends. And we call it Subway. <laughs> so, do, when the transaction is not mutually beneficial, it's essentially a bad transaction. I just agree. Yeah, may, may I? May I? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Um, the, it, I'm asking that question. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is impossible in a free market society to have a, a, a transaction that is not mutually beneficial. It's impossible right. because the only way that that's going to happen is with force and without a government that you can't do that. So, so the only way that you're going to trade somebody is if you place what you are giving them, whether it's a service, an idea, a product, whatever. Uh, the only way that you're going to give that to them is if you place what they have to offer you in higher value. This is the, the subjective theory of value. Right, but that's the transaction. Uh, now, there's also a gift, and that can be just… The reputation. Uh, right, in transfer of reputation, right. So, I mean, it's either that or, um, you know, they just don't want it anymore. Hey, we're giving this away because I just don't want it anymore. You know, that kind of thing. So That's other still people are going to value that while you don't. No, no, it's not that you don't, though. See, I, I, I disagree with you, Josh. Like, it's okay. not that you don't value that because you do, because the value that you're gaining is like the removal of said property because you have to pay for people to do that, or maybe you have to pay for the property to be disposed of, or that maybe doesn't, it that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean you actually value the property that you're giving away. That just means you value the space as opposed to the well. That space means that you filled. that means that you economically gain. If when not, you trade it away. Yes, because if you right. threw it away, so, you would probably... I think you misunderstood agree. the concept in the first place. What I'm saying is the object that you're giving away, you don't value it anymore. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yes, so I'm, you I'm saying against, against the negative value or, or neutral zero value that you place on it, you are also gaining in the fact that you don't need to reciprocate for disposal. Right. Right. Uh, there's this girl uh, that – this is a Facebook thing, but whatever. There's this girl that I didn't like for a long time, but I do now, um, Kara Curry, right? And she uh, – John's a mutual friend. Probably you guys are too. 
um, she recently had a bunch of wood in her yard that she needed to get rid of, and she was going to have to pay like $1,000 to get rid of it. And some guy came to her house and gave her 250 bucks to take it instead. I don't, don't, don't quote my numbers here, but that, that's my point, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sometimes placing zero, zero value in something causes you to lose capital. Right. Yeah, uh, speaking of capital, maybe we can go over the prices real quick. And um, I'd like to uh, shout out our Facebook page once again. If you uh, could take the time, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Fair of Anarchy. And uh, you can check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash Fair of Anarchy. And this product is always put out Wednesdays at 3 p.m. So check that out. Last time uh, we did this show was March 23rd. Uh, tonight is April 6th, uh, and this show is on Monday. So uh, last time the show, uh, last time silver was 1698. Tonight it was 1683. That's a 15 cent drop. That's 0.9 percent. Gold went from 1189.38 to 1211.39. That's 22 dollars in the cent. That's 1.9 percent. And Bitcoin went from 265.94 to 255.05. That's ten dollars eighty nine cents. That's a four point one percent drop. Yeah, there's not much change going on. Uh, it just looks like <clears throat> uh, over the. Uh, I think it was this week. Uh, the prices of these things have been going up, especially gold, but. Um, Silver is back into the 17, or was back in the 17s, and uh, I'm not saying that it's gonna go up only from here because, uh, again, I've been wrong plenty. <laughs> but uh, let's just say that I have a good feeling about this. When let's it, it, let in the fact that I have silver. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say that every silver owner ever said that it's gonna go up next week. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, my my silver is doing pretty good. Um, that, you know, I don't I don't buy much. Uh, I buy a little bit at a time, but it all adds up. I've been uh, buying for a, <clears throat> uh, about a year now. Um, here, I actually have them. Uh, about a year ago at Forkfest, I bought my first pieces, which were the uh, Sons of Liberty quarter ounce pieces. That's this one right here. Wow. Yep. Much of a cool. Player. Quarter ounce. Yeah, I got uh, four of them for like, I don't remember what it was, 23 or 24 bucks. 24 bucks or 25 bucks. Or, yeah, something like that. But um, yeah, I've been buying since then and I've got um, all total about 11 ounces or so right now. Most of it's in, in junk silver, like these uh, pre-1964 quarters. Nice. Is there any, anything 1965, I mean before 1965, they're uh, they're ninety percent silver, so check your coins whenever you you know get change from a store or drive through or whatever. I actually found a silver dime in a Dunkin' Donuts drive through one time. That was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, they oh, have shit, a different son. ring to them, so you can definitely tell if you have a silver quarter or a silver dime. They're really distinctive. Oh yeah, you know it right away as soon as you get a silver, as soon as you get a silver piece. I, I'm pretty sure Michael just got one recently, right? <laughs> Like a motherfucking boss, I did, kid. Yeah, man. You knew it. I you did. Knew it. I did. Your hand and went clink. You knew right I away. Did. I picked that thing up and felt it hit my hand, and I knew exactly what was up. And it you was know. only a dime. It's only worth like a dollar and three cents, but still, just the the fucking baseline first principle of what just happened there it made me ejaculate immediately. <laughs> I'll say that. Cash money. Cash money. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Um, because I am not a money person. I don't do silver. I don't do gold. I don't do Bitcoin. I really don't even like fiat either. Um, but obviously, I still have to live. And so, come. <laughs> but your property is your property. It is not my property. Um, I, I don't personally like that kind of stuff. So, what are you guys going to do when, let's say, I don't know, a solar flare comes and knocks everything out? What are you going to do with your May silver? I? I mean, you can't eat it. May. It's not super valuable if nobody can do anything with it. 
Well, that's hey not Sarah. True. Hey Sarah, you won't be able to do much with your food once a solar solar flare hits us either. <laughs> that's I hate those kind of <laughs> scenarios because no, no, it's no, no, so no. absurd. It's so absurd, Sarah. Sorry. I think we need some clarification on what a solar flare is. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It's just an EMP, basically. There you go. That's what I was so trying it, to say. So it's not going to kill anyone. Anything. Yeah, silver and gold are going to have quite a bit of value when there's no electricity. Yeah. Okay, but why? Because, because they're highly conductive. They are the most because uh, f no conductive does not matter if there's a solar no. EMP actually. No. Um, however, gold and silver are the most recognized representative form of subjective value that has ever existed in hum in human history. So people are obviously instantly going to revert back to that. Right. I'd say that's why. Yeah, that's about right. You have to have a, a universal system of, of you know, payment or barter. I mean, barter can only go so far, but if I have product A and Michael has product B, I want product B, but he's looking for product C. My product A doesn't really help me at that point. So to have some and kind the only of way that you would give me product A is if you found benefit in gaining product B from me, and I found benefit in gaining product A from you, which makes it a mutually right. beneficial operation. And the only way that you would do that is if you saw value in it. Yeah, I was going to say you, you have to have some kind of a, a universal medium of exchange because not everybody is going to have exactly what you're looking for. Don't get me wrong, I fully support barter and, and whatever kind of transaction gets you through the day, I fully support it, but I do really believe in gold and silver as having a place in, in that universal medium of exchange. Yeah, it's not just gold and silver. It's, it can be, to me, any elemental metal, anything that can be boiled down to one element, uh, literally boiled, because... Uh, like if you if you have water, that's great, but eventually that evaporates, you know that kind of thing, and you, you can't get a hold of it always. Anyway, but basically something that's tangible, something you can hold in your hand, and an ounce of gold is a thousand dollars right now. If you want to equate it, you know what I mean. So it has it has so much wealth in just one little coin. You know what I mean. And, you know, silver is a way to break down that value. Um, platinum is a good um, uh, uh, exchange off of gold because it's about the same at any given point. You know, so those kind of metals are, um, they hold value. Right. And they, um, it doesn't deteriorate. Uh, so, like, if you were to throw it into an ocean, you can reclaim that uh, same amount of value from, like, a thousand years ago. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. An, an ounce of gold today has the same purchasing power as it did a thousand, two thousand years ago. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, gold it's not slightly better, you know. That's, right. that's right. true. Um, may I? May I? Go. Because I think that you guys are all... Okay, Zane, Zane I will not say this for, because he did not... Uh, put in his opinion. However, I think all three of you are missing the point entirely. And Josh, I'm not sure what your fascination with 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 metals is. Though I agree, like there's, um, I've I've made the point about why I like junk silver best, right, numerous times. And I would say that that same logic applies to why you like metal, right? Yeah. Because it's it's a people know that it's valuable, right? Well, it's you not don't just go explaining. Yeah. Please. Go ahead. Um, so, so my point here is that Sarah's talking about food and 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 EMPs and you know what what's going to be value if there's no electricity like uh, toilet paper and and food and water and and that stuff and and if you trade that to somebody else what you are doing is utilizing a representative form of subjective value and you are trading that to somebody else who is doing exactly the same thing so I don't think that. Yes, money, uh, hard metals are easier for me to explain to people why they're valuable if I don't need to sell them something that's going to keep them alive. Yeah, yeah, that makes good sense, I think. Yeah, um, however, it's all money. Everything's money. 
your shirt is money if I want it, right? Your your sweet new headphones, Josh, and your sweet new microphone, if I want that more than my piece of gold, it's money. And if we trade, you are making an economic exchange. Right? I, I make a differentiation, though, because I just call this capital. This is a tool, you know, and money is a specific kind of tool. Uh, anything can be a currency, if you will, but um, basically... Current uh, money is supposed to be something that is solid. Uh, you can count it. Uh, it's a unit of measure. Uh, can I not? Can, go ahead. Can I not count your headphones? Yes, but you can, can actually not do break this down things? even further. You know what I mean? Like, um, basically, the the smallest unit is meant to be uh, even smaller than uh, an ounce of copper. You know, a, a smaller than a penny. You know. It, I, even further than that, you know, like uh, that's why Bitcoin actually is a good unit of measure in that sense because it just, I just don't all see, the way down. Go ahead. I don't want to. I don't think we should. We should take over the the show here, but I just don't see yeah. the correlation sure. of how you're. <laughs> so, well, just, yeah, it's true. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Sarah. Please, please, please. Yeah. No, I'm mostly proud of that because um, I, I don't. I personally don't see a value in it. I can't melt it down and make a bullet. And so if I can't melt it down and make a bullet, I can't go and shoot my food. Why couldn't you? Well, Your gold headphones? is pretty soft. I mean, I guess oh. you could make gold I've bullets. I've heard of a golden bullet bullets. before. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're going to have to have a lot of them. <laughs> but my point is... is can you, make, can you make chicken into a bullet? You I, actually can get a lot of shit out of it. <laughs> I get that. All right. All right. You're a funny guy. <laughs> anyway, all, all it's meant to be is just a unit of trading. That's all money literally is. That's what money is. That's why That's why it's a separate whole other... Uh, that, that's why it's got a whole another name to it. You know, in my whole op in my whole opinion, what we are all doing right now, the five of us, uh, yeah, five of us, four of us. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is money. This is an economic exchange. You guys would not be on this show if you did not find value in it. We would not have you on if we did not find value in it. We are changing money right now. That's my opinion. That's why I don't understand why, because I, I agree with that, and I don't understand why gold and silver and precious metals are on such a huge pedestal. And that's probably just, you know, my personal opinion. The reason that I think they're on a huge pedestal is because they have been the main sources of, of economic exchange for thousands and thousands of years. So they are relatable, and people understand that that means that. Right. That's right. Meant by nature. Yeah. Right. And that makes just not to me. <laughs> well, it, it's a uh, it's it's a uh, finite. It's rare. Uh, that's why they're called precious. They're, uh, it's not so much. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah. Not my precious. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I was thinking I can't of compare the two quarters. Be precious. Oh, God, no. No, John. John, you haven't spoke. Both Zane and John got a turn right now. No, I don't have anything yes, to you say. Both, no, you both get a turn. Neither of you guys have spoken in, in, in ten minutes. Go All ahead. Right, go John, ahead. you go first. Yeah. yeah, what Josh was saying about it being precious metals, um, I actually have two quarters here that we can compare. And, um, right. All right, this one here is the silver one. And I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's really shiny. It's okay. It's a little bit too close. Yeah. <laughs> well, back, yeah, back, back up. Back up, dude. There. Yeah, there you go. All right. Oh, Wow. You see the silver one shine? See mm -hmm. how shiny that is? That's crazy. Even side by side. If you ever see a silver quarter in a roll of quarters, you will know it right away. Look at the edge of that. This, right. this is money. This is bullshit. Well, no, that's not totally true either. It's just devalued. Uh, yeah. well, what? It's because it's a copper alloy. Right. Josh. Yeah, this is I, a I, giant penny. It's all it's all zinc and copper. This is a giant. It doesn't. Penny. No, no, I know yeah, where Josh is about right. to go. And the fact of the matter is, is it doesn't fucking matter what it's made of. If please, if people think that it is valuable, it is valuable. That's all. It doesn't it's matter. Not 
It's not quite that simple, though, because it's also rarity. Tell that, to, tell that to 99% of the world, man. Sorry. Well, the, right. Take a look at the currency, why it's so devalued. That's why, you know, that's one reason. is because it's not made of silver anymore, so the dollar's lost value because there are mostly quarters that are made of mostly copper. It's so um, common compared to silver. That's why more people want silver, at least people that have woken up or woken up. Exactly. So it, it is just math. It, it, mm. That's what this is all about. Money is about math. It's not necessarily about, uh, you know, subjective value. Yes, obviously, it is subjective value. That's why we exchange all the time. But my point is the reason why one is valued more is based on math, is based on objective, just not it's there, you know, or not I just, there. I but, love you, Josh, to death and, like, <laughs> I will punch you one day. I really will. But uh, I think that and, okay. where, 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 where we're going to disagree is like, like a I nap violation. I'm not sure that I believe in that. Um, I think <laughs> that that yeah. money is is an idea. That's it. It's not. It's not a it has, value. Has nothing to do with it, man. It's just what you think. It's just an opinion. That's all. It's just a preference. To hashtag, kind of, pre hashtag preferences. I kind of agree with that because really, if you handed me a quarter that was made of solid silver and said, "Hey, I want two eggs," I'd be like, "Um, I can't do anything with this quarter. I'm sorry." If you want to give me a quart of raw milk for my dozen eggs, we got something going right here. That's great, but I don't want your currency. Sarah, here's my here, here's my question for you, Sarah. Is Raw milk, money. To me, yes. I would trade a lot of stuff for raw milk. Yeah. I, oh, look at those arms! Look at those arms back there, huh? Damn, <laughs> son. That's my <laughs> grand archie right back there. <laughs> Swole. Swole, anyway. baby. <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, I, I do pay money right now for raw milk because that's what the person requires of me. But I would prefer to have uh, more thing, trade them for eggs or trade them for a goat or you know something like that. Right, but that's that's what it's all about is the fact that he won't accept anything except for money or what he wants. So yeah. you have to come to a mutual. Understanding it, it's usually based on money, as we know it. Yeah. So that that's what I'm trying to get at is uh, that's where the math comes in. That's where the uh, subjective preferences for money come in. It's so. more of a tradition than anything. It's what what I'm possible. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll, I'll agree with that. I I fully agree with that. Like that's been my point about gold and silver. The reason that I think people like gold and silver is because just because people have used it forever. Um, but also traditions are the worst excuse for anything, basically ever. It's um, not just tradition on my end. You know. What I'm oh, saying? I, uh, Go ahead. Well, there are limited uses to gold and silver. Sure. But okay. as Sarah pointed out, and I'm not gonna, I'm not an ANCOM dude. I'm not. I'm not an ANCAP either, though. So no, I'm just kidding. Um, as Sarah pointed out, I, I if I'm starving to death, I can't really eat silver. I can't. No, obviously. Some people have tried. I can't believe that. Some people have actually tried to do this, and they turn silver. At least that's what I hear. <laughs> what? what is wrong with you? I need. I need to no. learn that. I need to learn that magic trick. I, turning yeah. silver sounds yeah. very lucrative. Yeah, and it's can, also it, probably something that's in Marvel just comics. Learn how to surf. <laughs> oh, Zane. Zane with the motherfucking Marvel comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I quit, I quit the show right now. I never I need to do this show. again. <laughs> Good night. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Did she oh. just say it's happening? That's a he. No, that's a he. That's a he. That's a he. Yeah. Did he just say that it's happening? happening? No, what is oh, happening? What? It's a she, isn't it? She. Well, yeah. don't you have one kid with the long blonde hair, though? A boy? Or you did? Oh, yeah. He yeah, shaved his name. Zane. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so since we're on this high note, I want to ask everybody what's their favorite comedian. Go, John. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, of, of all time, or, or what? Yeah, a few, um, a few, a few. All right, George Carlin, hands down. I mean, that should just go without saying. Um, let's see, Louis C.K. I'm really into. And I hear a lot about Doug Stanhope. I should probably look into him a lot oh, more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sarah. Uh, well, George Carlin is obviously going to be one of the best. Um, Mitch Hedberg. Uh, and Ron White. I really like Ron White. Rest in peace. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Zane. Me? Um, I don't watch a lot of stand-up comedy, so I prefer, like, YouTubers, and I like the uh, channel called Rooster Teeth. My favorite stand-up comedian is probably Angela Johnson, just because she makes fun of the Raiders. I've never heard of her. <laughs> She's really great. <laughs> uh, Michael, what about you? Yeah, I'm going to take a little longer than the rest of them. Um, so first, I'm going to go with Zane, with Zane's sentiment on the YouTubers. Like, I like Chris Cantwell, man. I think that my fav two of my favorite jokes that I've ever heard are... <laughs> I, I trust this government like I trust speech therapy from Julie Borowski. That's one of my favorite things. <laughs> and uh, that this, my episode. <laughs> I know, and I'll say it again, too. And uh, I think my second one would be like, I trust this government like I trust legal advice from Adam Kokesh. Um, but, 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 uh, aside from that, I like... Uh, <laughs> I like some alternative stuff that's like BBC, really. Like I like Laurie and Fry, like Hugh Laurie and Daniel Fry. Uh, they had a show like in the '80s. Hugh Laurie played House, like House MD. Um, I like Monty Python. Doug Stanhope's really good. Obviously, honorable mention to George Carlin. Yes. Rest, 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 bro. <laughs> uh, I wish I believed in gods just for him. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd suppose that's, like, the extent. I like Danny DeVito. Robin Williams' older stuff, he used to have this bit where he, like, he has really hairy arms. He would, like, pretend to eat out of vagina in his arms. And he had this whole bit, and it was, it was hilarious. Um, Rest in peace. Yeah. But like Zane, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't watch stand-up comedy. I'll basically watch YouTube clips. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, same here. I, uh, I've been into Jim Gaffigan a lot. Uh, George Carlin, uh, Stan Hope is freaking awesome. He really, I don't agree with everything he says, but he's freaking awesome. Uh, he's like, he's like, he's like Ayn Rand, dude. He's like, I'm like yeah. this close to agreeing with you. Yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. But, uh, the yeah, anyway, like, those are like my top guys right now. And uh, I was just I curious, you know, just to start or end this on a high note. I do have to say, um, if y'all have never seen the Jim Gaffigan's, uh, the one about having four, what's it like to have a fourth child? Yes. If, if, imagine you're drowning and being handed a baby. That is, like, exactly what it is. Right. It's not even comedy. It's just real life, and it's freaking funny. He, he said, a, yeah, it was, um, like, he started off with, oh, I, I just had a kid, and everybody's like, woo! And, yeah, it's my fourth, and everybody's silent. And he's like, I love the silence that follows that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Anyway, so uh, I would just want to go down the line and, uh, you know, everybody mention uh, where we can find you guys. Zane, you go first, guy. Uh, you can find me on YouTube and search Zane Bedell. Or you can probably find me on Facebook somewhere. I am pretty active on a lot of Facebook libertarian pages, but so find me there, I guess. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Sarah, <laughs> uh, you can find me on Facebook at Dirty Anarchist Kids. <laughs> the best thing ever. It is. That page kicks so much ass. Oh. I love that page. <laughs> Thank you. All right, John. Yeah, I'll join in on on the uh, on the love with Sarah. Yeah, I love Dirty Anarchist Kids. It's a great page. You can <clears throat> uh, you can find me over at uh, the New Sons and Daughters of Liberty on Facebook, and we have the profile picture of the Minuteman guy in front of the ANCAP flag. See you there. It's so ironic, but not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a reason for it. The the image kind of goes way back. Oh, okay. 
Because when we when we started it, it was the Minuteman guy in front of the in front of a Constitution, and um, you know as we as we changed, you know, went libertarian to voluntarist and all that, we put the the end cap flag behind him. But um, I I won't I won't get rid of the Minuteman guy because one of our old, one of our former admins claimed that we stole it from one of his websites or something. So just to uh, just the middle finger of the IP, uh, I'm purposely <laughs> keeping it now and not getting rid of it. Oh, man. I love you, Landers. I love you, Landers. <laughs> Come on, abolishing authority with Michael Freeman. I would love, love, love <laughs> to do the minarchist ver versus anarchist debate with you. Please, buddy. Please. Oh, man. And miss you. Miss you. Yeah, speaking of that, um, I believe that uh, – I'm just going to shout out Eric Bell's show. Uh, he has uh, a minarchist versus anarchist debate coming up. Uh, if it hasn't already passed, but uh, he's going to be debating. Jen. Jen, yeah, Jen Hefffield. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty awesome. Has Jen not been wrecked enough times? Oh, I know. Yeah, it, multiple times by multiple people. It's ridiculous. But hey, whatever. It's spreading the message of anarchy. Maybe he's doing it on purpose. He should must we, be doing it on purpose. Should we? Should we seek him out? I think we should. I, think <laughs> I we want. This. I want. Stephen, um, former Staff Sergeant Stephen Landers, if you're watching this show, we want you to come on and debate us, particularly me, and John can be the go-through, okay, buddy? I know we served in, in combat together and all this stuff, but we really want you to come talk philosophy, please. Yeah, philosophy, that's it. <laughs> Our next show is April 13th, live, and uh, I believe that we're having Jordan Page on the show, Michael. What, what's going on with that? We are having Jordan Page, and the song is still to be determined. Um, I think that it might even be up to us to get to decide which song he performs, whichever one we like, and and that's pretty freaking cool. I, that is cool. Um, but he's going to come on the show, and he's going to perform a song for us live on the Currency of Anarchy, and this is something that we have never done before, so I, awesome. look for, I look forward to it. Definitely. Yeah, so uh, check for us there. And our YouTube page is youtube.com slash user slash Cur of Anarchy. And you can, again, find that April 13th live. And uh, so please check it out and take it easy, everybody. Everybody say hey, goodbye. See you guys. Bye. See you later.